Watching Jordan Peele's Get Out feels a bit like being strapped to a chair and having no way to escape. The movie so perfectly understands the conventions of the horror genre, and what the audience expects of horror, using this knowledge to construct many of your typical horror cliches. A nighttime abduction, creepy house in the middle of the woods, random jump scares. But this is also paired alongside a complete reconstruction of horror, which can be best described as leaving you with an innate, unshakable feeling of unease and discomfort. Slowly floating through the city, confined to a compact metal box. All you do is stare out the window. It's all you really can do. Stare at the streets, the people, the inner workings of urban life. This is life as a taxi driver. In the hour and 54 minutes that we get to spend with Travis Bickle, we get mere glimpses into the mind of a mentally unstable man but also a man who is fundamentally aimless and lost. He finds himself in a larger-than-life metropolis, where every nook and cranny is filled with noise and human presence. This is especially the case at night, with a million blinking lights and a million more people walking to and fro. The audience knows that something bad, something truly awful, is going to happen. It's this anticipation that the movie uses to lure the viewer in, and to keep them hostage when things get really ugly. Ugly in terms of blood and fighting and torture, but also a subtler sort of ugly, the quiet sort, where you're compelled to endure the ramifications of what happens on screen. There's simply no escaping the grief, the trauma and the blatant racism that this movie douses you in. As a viewer, you are forced to confront the real horrors in the movie. And it feels awful, like you are being continuously lacerated on the inside. But you have no other choice than to stare at it. The nightlight is all framed outside the walls of the taxi, and by extension, the walls that are put up in Travis's mind. We see what Travis sees, what Travis wants to see. And what exactly is it that Travis sees? He sees the prostitution that litters the streets. He sees silhouettes through curtained windows. He sees Betsy through glass office windows. He sees porn at the theatre. He tries to see into the most intimate and fragile parts of society. And in this attempt, the audience is also pulled in with him. Travis is an insomniac. He literally cannot close his eyes at night. When Chris hits a deer near the beginning of the movie and goes to inspect its body, he gives this reaction. It's an expression that has so much to say, yet feels like all that emotion is being kept from bursting out. His eyes are what stay with you. The movie never directly explains this scene, but it never needs to. Everything in the story is seen from Chris's perspective. We are fully and unapologetically immersed into his worldview, seeing things how he sees them, experiencing events how he does. We never end up deviating from his eyes. They are the piercing threshold between us and Chris. They dissolve the barrier of the screen, and in the most poignant of moments, feel like they are calling out to us, reaching out to us for us to share in his sorrow and pain and guilt. The movie feels almost like a video journal, snapshots of society that are presented and left to be slowly digested. The viewer is left to soak up the atmosphere and the ambience, to see for themselves the innermost mechanisms of the city. Travis contextualizes what he sees during these nighttime episodes using his own twisted sense of morality. He despises the grime, the muck, that in his eyes pollutes the well. His solution is to take matters into his own hands, to do what in his eyes nobody else is willing to do. Much like how Chris is called upon to confront his guilt of not helping his mother, the audience is called to confront their own perceptions of racism. 
there really becomes a point in the movie where Chris's struggle feels akin to what so many people have to struggle with in real life. Race, trauma, loneliness, guilt. These don't just feel like themes that the movie contains to itself. It diffuses these ideas to the viewer, making them feel challenged, but also compelled to do something about them. This feeling extends beyond the end of the movie. It lingers on, leaving a permanent impact. We spend a great deal of time seeing Travis familiarise himself with weaponry, modifying and tweaking and practising. And just like he examines every crevice of New York, he examines every crevice of his guns. There is a monumental weight, a gravitas that can be felt when Travis holds his gun. It's the sort of thing that's hard to come by these days. What adds to the unsettling horror of the movie even more is the fact that it doesn't really have a resolution. Yes, Rod comes and saves Chris, but there is an equally likely scenario where that isn't the case, where things end up horribly wrong. You get the undeniable truth that this gun is the thing capable of killing, capable of ending any one of the lives that Travis has interacted with. The suspense lies in the fact that you never know who he's going to point it at. The sheer existence of this alternate ending leaves a pit in my stomach. It may not be what we got in the end, but it exists. Either way, Chris never truly gets out. Eventually, Travis's observations of society transforms into a violent and volatile rebellion against what he deems to be the scum that litter the streets. He may have escaped from a select few people, it is a chaotic expulsion of pent-up energy, what the whole movie has been leading up to this whole time. But he never got out of the systems, the audience is waiting for it. They know it's coming, that oppress him in the first place. But when it happens, there's a part of you that feels a little empty afterwards. It's a grossly accurate reflection of real life. An emptiness that is derived from a feeling of unease. Travis has had his bold, bloody, gutsy act of savagery. This is the point that the whole movie has been leading up to. We may fight back against a few bad people, but nothing comes out of it. We seemingly get a return to the status quo. A few blatantly racist people, Travis is sensationalised by the papers as a hero, but he could have just as easily been sensationalised as a savage terrorist. But when are we actually going to fight back? The conclusion is one that depicts the most optimistic outcome possible against the deeper rooted institutionalised problems. But the idea still lingers that things could have just as easily gone horribly wrong. When are we truly going to get out? This is my favourite shot in the movie. The camera slowly moves away from and leads us to a long corridor. We can interpret this in multiple ways. Perhaps listening to how it sounds is too much for even the camera to handle and thus it moves away, not being able to bear witness to his I also like to think that this shot deliberately shows at the end of the corridor. It always ends up calling out, dragging him back in. This slow walk down a corridor, leading us back in to the proper. What it feels like is that we can never truly escape. Thanks for watching.